Hello everyone, Kurt Olper here. Welcome back to another episode from Homefighter Labs. Uh, today we are going to be showcasing some of the recent work I've done in regards to drawing from a scabbard of a sword um, and putting myself into different types of tactical situations right here um, in regards to multiple target engagements. Now I want to make sure everything very clear about this right here is that essentially uh, the more that I, I work with this and I explore with this concept of um, arms of, of sharp tools and whatnot right here to strike against certain tar target areas right here, the more new ideas kind of come into play here as far as what exactly is the use of the art of arms in general and what other things are we maybe not looking at yet that might actually give a little bit more perspective into this. So with that being the case here, I'm gonna showcase here, uh, again, just showing some of the stuff I've done here as far as some cutting, uh, some recent cutting videos out there. Um, and then I'm also gonna be talking a little bit about uh, some things that kind of crossed my mind. But with that being the case here, let's get into it. So you may have seen some of the other cutting that I've done in the past here, and I've certainly run this type of course and maybe not filmed it or shared it, but this is more along the lines of what I'm working for in regards to the practice I'm uh, hoping to develop with myself, students, anyone else out there that's trying to understand this in regards to the works of Fiore, um, and how do we activate these tools that would be normally belted on us and we're deploying them for very specific actions. Um, and what are some of the tactical considerations? This whole time out here when I was doing this, my uh, the lance that I train with out there, um, the big time sword fam to me, um, they're watching all this right here. And again, one of the things I was thinking about as they were there in presence, that they're observing me. And I had to, even though everyone's safe, but I was thinking to myself like, what happens if there's people in between here? What are the other type of situational considerations am I dealing with? You know, in, in, in you know, they talk about with the modern day firearms, if you carry or anything like this right here, if you do fire, if you do shoot, you are responsible for where that round goes. Was it the same thing right here as far as cuts and violence within certain areas within the medieval era? I don't necessarily have the answer to that question. And I'm curious if anyone else out here does. Uh, but the, but it, gave me, it made me think about what are the considerations we're missing here? Like what happens if this is really close? What if this is a hallway or, a, uh, or if this was... Uh, more along the lines of, like, say, an alleyway or something, where I'm very, it's very narrow. I, or what happens if there's like a, what if it's like one of those old housings or things up here? How, how do I get these things activated? Made me think about a lot of considerations in that. 
because there's also reasons why people carry it in different times. There's also times where it wasn't allowed to be done. Um, but all this together here put more consideration out there and made me start to think more and more and more about the tactics and some of the things I've learned just in the basics of shooting in the Marine Corps, which dealt a lot along the lines of known distance, unknown distances, supported shooting, un not supported shooting, are you shooting in body armor? Is it wet outside? Is it raining outside? Are you indoors? Are you outdoors? Are the people there? All these other considerations here made me kind of wonder, what are we missing contextually in regards to the action of deploying the sword in a lethal action moment such as this right here? So uh, one thing out there, this is a personal thing I'm doing right here, and I, I don't have no evidence on it, but, it, and I, but, I, but I like it. I like it as a personal practice. You, you may have seen in the last portion of the videos there, I'm stepping back with Postal Longa, looking down my blade towards the direction in which action has just happened. So a couple things in that. What that does for me is it keeps me in the mindset of, I have to finish this. I have to focus on this. I'm backing away from a situation and then I'm able to put the sword away from it and back into its holster. See, holster. Uh, back into its scabbard and carry on with whatever I have to do from there. Uh, Playing, the, playing with that kind of notion of like utilizing the sword out in front, using post to long, the long point, the spec fence, or whatever you want to call it, shooting no kamai, really makes me wonder, is that the same thing we see right here when it comes down to firearm training where I'm still presented, but I'm searching and assessing, I'm looking out towards an area because do I have to do anything else? And again, just the more I apply some of my military training with this, uh, and again, remind you, I'll say this every time I bring it up, not an infantryman. So infantry infantry and soft operators, special operation people probably have a lot more, way more that they could bring they could bring up to this as far as observations that may be things that combat people are thinking about, that maybe even Fury's thinking about, but it just doesn't have it in the manuscripts I'm out there. Or maybe it's something right there that you would have somebody else with you, so therefore something else changes up. We don't know. But the the point being here is again, the postures in which we take. What what makes things happen? And you know, a lot of times, you know, we see some of the forms that happen in Bato Do or Bato Jitsu when you see them when they are drawing the sword to take actions and now the sword is out and, we're, and we transition from Bato Jitsu to Kenjitsu and then all these other things are right here that comes in. Sometimes how they, they move position to position translates with immediate action. You can't turn, if I turn like this and my sword's like this and there's no ceiling here. I just thunk this and now I'm getting, I mean, I, I can get attacked myself. So how do you move in positions in such a way that is seamless? And that's kind of what I was exploring here. So deploying the sword, I'm taking action here, I'm breaking it down, I'm striking in with it, some form or fashion. And then afterwards, I have to turn because as this is out, I have to keep it in such a form and fashion that's close. So if I turn, I'm not hitting everything else around me. I'm turning, but the sword's not. So the sword may be forward this way, but by turn, now it's on the left side of my body. But, and I kind of talk about this in earlier videos when I, caught, when I talk about reciprocal guards. But anyway, that's just going to be conclude this right here. Again, this is just kind of a, a brief kind of look at this. And I'm very curious to hear, see what people have to say about it. Again, like, you know, I'm not trying to say like, you know, swords and firearm training was the same thing as far as how people went with it all. But combat people are combat people. And, you know, there's things that they think about that not everyone else is potentially thinking about here. You know, some of us might be thinking, well, it'd be great if I have a sword here in place. Like, what? Oh yeah, that's great. And what happens if you can't draw it in time? What happens if these other things right here? And I'm not saying this that is a practice, but you know, these are things that kind of make me wonder more and more and more about what are we doing here? Um, is there context to this? Probably. We just haven't uncovered it yet. But again, I, I leave this out there to you, uh, to you all, dear viewers, to let me know what you think of it. Leave a comment below. Uh, with that being the case, I guess that's going to wrap up the video here. If you're new to the channel, please consider liking and subscribing. If you're one of my viewers and subscribers, thank you so much for the support. I love it. I love the support you put out there, and I love the questions and comments that you put in below when you put them out there. I really appreciate that. It helps me continue on with other ideas to kind of explore in this practice of fury. Uh, but as always, until next time, everybody, remember, be safe out there, train well, and fight on. I'll see you all soon.